Hi, good morning, everyone. I feel like no one said that yet. Um, I'm Tara, happy Father's Day. And I'm finally about to graduate high school tomorrow. And I always felt like this moment standing here giving a sermon was so far away, but now it's here. So the theme of Youth Sunday is flawless, and I'd like to open up with a joke about what would make a pastor flawless. And by the way, Pastor Brandon, I think you're pretty flawless. <laughs> So, the perfect pastor preaches exactly 10 minutes. He condemns sin roundly, but never hurts anyone's feelings. He works from 8 a.m. until midnight. The perfect pastor makes $40 a week, wears good clothes, drives a good car, buys good books, and donates $30 a week to the church. <laughs> he is 29 years old and has 40 years of experience. <laughs> and above all, he's handsome. The perfect pastor has a burning desire to work with teenagers, and he spends most of his time with senior citizens. He smiles all the time with a straight face because he has a sense of humor that keeps him seriously dedicated to his church. He makes 15 home visits a day and is always in his office to be handy when needed. The perfect pastor always has time for church council and all of its committees. He never misses the meeting of any church organization and he's always busy evangelizing the unchurched. The perfect pastor is always in the next church over. <laughs> so bottom line from all of this is that the perfect pastor always seems to be the church next door, right? Why not right here? So I think that's because no one can truly be flawless. In today's society, I think there's so much pressure to be perfect, and I can speak from experience about how that feels as a teenager and how I personally tackled this challenge. One minute someone tells you to be yourself, and then the next minute you feel like you're not good enough. You're stressed out about school and expected to look and act a certain way. Since these standards are nearly unattainable, what is a teenager supposed to do? According to the Dove Self-Esteem Fund, they did a survey and they said seven out of 10 girls believe they're not good enough. And the 70% of girls is way too high. And I would have previously placed myself in this percentage. What I think is more important than talking about the pressure I felt is how I overcame it. I've been going to church for as long as I can remember. I used to go to church at the United Methodist Church of Newfoundland, close to where I live. Going there, I always felt welcome and happy. But something changed when my family decided to come to this church. I still always feel welcomed and happy here, but I feel like I've truly built a relationship with God because of this church. I feel like when I come to church on Sunday morning, the rest of the stress and problems I'm dealing with go away. At this church, I always feel like people care about me. Because of this church, I was, always, I was able to truly embark on my faith journey. This relationship makes me feel flawless. We all make mistakes, we all have to learn to love ourselves and each other, flaws and all, just like God loves us. No one is perfect, so how can a teenager strive to be perfect? God loves us with all his heart, with an unrelenting love, striving for flawlessness and living like God wants us to is all he asks for. God is there to love and support us through this journey. <laughs>